we now look at semi definite programs the standard form for a semi definite program is of the forms minimize c transpose x subject to a matrix constraint so the constraint is that f of x f of x is a matrix function which means that it takes a vector input and outputs a matrix so this is equal to g plus f1 so g is a matrix f1 is a matrix and so on x1 plus f2 x2 till fn xn is negative semi definite and other constraints like ax equal to b right so note here that the vector x contains entries x1 x2 till xn and we are we do require that g as well as all the fi's are symmetric because only for symmetric real matrices we have considered eigen values and negative semi definite property or positive semi definite property so we require g and fi's to be symmetric this particular kind of constraint this is the negative semi definiteness constraint on a matrix which is a function of x so this is called the linear matrix inequality because it is the left hand side here is a linear function of several matrices right so this is called the linear matrix inequality or the lmi right so sometimes you will also see people referring to these as lmis or problems with lmi constraints so this is the standard form for an sdp and before we do anything we should actually try to take a look at what this looks like in some special cases so let's take a special case which is the diagonal case when all these matrices g and fi's are all diagonal so let's say that the i ith entry or let's say j j th entry of g is g j and the j j th entry of f i is f j of i so if all of these are diagonal then what we obtain what is f of x so we can see that f of x is this matrix whose first entry would be g1 plus f11 x1 plus f f21 x2 and so on all the way till fn1 xn so that is the 1,1th entry and then there will be all zeros and the second entry would be g2 plus f21 x1 plus f22 x2 again all the way till fn2 xn and then rest will be zeros right and it would be a diagonal matrix like this so what does it mean for f of x to be negative semi definite so whenever you have a diagonal matrix and it is required to be negative semi definite the constraint is equivalent to saying that each of the diagonal entries are negative right so for a diagonal matrix everything is very simple the eigen values are its diagonal entries and the eigen values being negative is equivalent to saying that so we can express this constraint as gj plus summation over i equal to 1 to n fj i times xi is less than equal to 0 and we already know what kind of constraint is this so this is for all j and this is simply a linear inequality constraint right so the special case when g and f were both diagonal the sdp reduces to a linear programming problem right so it is the more complicated cases when they are not diagonal that we need to worry about for the special case when they are diagonal it is simply an lp now in general the question would arise that in the general form is sdp convex so is sdp convex right is the constraint which is expressed like this which is the lmi is it a convex constraint in x now that is indeed the case because the constraint that fx is negative semi definite is equivalent to saying that minus f of x is 
पॉजिटिव सेमी डेफिनेट राइट विच इज इक्वलेंट टू सेइंग व्हाट विच इज इक्वलेंट टू सेइंग दैट ऑल द आइगन वैल्यूज ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स आर लेस देन इक्वल टू जीरो राइट सो दीज आर एज यू रिमेंबर दीज आर रेस्ट इक्वलेंट कैरेक्टराइजेश एंड दिस वन यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट एज द मैक्सिमम आइगन वैल्यू ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स is less than equal to zero. So all the eigen values are less than equal to zero means the maximum eigen value is also less than equal to zero. So this constraint, which was expressed as f of x less than equal to zero, or f of x negative semi definite, is equivalent to the constraint that maximum eigen value of f of x is less than equal to zero. Now the claim is that lambda max of f of x is a convex function so the claim is that lambda max of f of x is a convex function note that if this is convex this constraint fx negative semi definite would be equivalent so to this constraint that lambda max f of x less than equal to 0 which is that convex is less than equal to 0 so this would be in the standard convex form in that case so it remains to prove that lambda max f of x is actually a convex function of x now how do we prove that for this purpose we will use the one definition of f of uh, of the maximum eigen value of a symmetric matrix which we have seen earlier so first thing is that recall that lambda max of a matrix a is given by maximum of norm of y less than equal to 1 y transpose ay so if you remember this definition we will use this definition to establish that lambda max of f of x is actually a convex function so how can we do that let's look at y transpose f of x y which is basically y transpose g y plus x1 times y transpose f1 y plus x2 times y transpose f2 y all the way till x n times y transpose f n y right so as you can see what kind of function of x is y transpose f x of y this is a affine function so this is a affine function of x now what is going on here when we say the when we talk about lambda max of f of x it is equal to maximum of norm of y equal to 1 y transpose f of x y which is a affine function in x so there are bunch of affine functions in x one for a different value of y and we are maximizing these functions over all possible choices of y such that norm of y is equal to 0 so as you remember this is nothing but the point wise maximum of affine functions right and whenever you have a point wise maximum of affine functions that function is always convex so this implies that lambda max f of x is convex in x so hence we have established that lambda max f of x is convex in x and therefore this implies that sdps are convex problems hence we have been able to establish that sdps are in fact convex problems now what we will do is look at various examples of sdp just to get a idea and a handle of on manipulating sdps